and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the sim racers for mental health race of champions race number six at irwindale speedway i'm joined by my co-host here sam dyer my name is matthew rodriguez we bring you all 80 laps here tonight obviously we have a uh, an interesting race looking at last week a uh, pretty much three to four drivers dominated the field you saw ryan gavel's amazing comeback and uh riley o'keefe uh, manages to uh came back or came back from that uh instant finally wins his first race so sam and, who do you who do you think's got it tonight uh right now a car we gotta watch out for is the 88 of tommy kremberg he's someone that is always come some uh, somewhat up front uh also ryan gavel and O'Keefe is someone that we need to watch out for. Those three cars have always been up front, but someone to watch out for is going to be our pole sitter. It's Scott, it's Scott Rickard. Yeah, it's, it's a tongue twister. It is. And I, I mean, we haven't seen him in the pole position at all this season, and so it's going to be interesting to see if he can stay up front or if there's going to be an incident that happens during the race. Absolutely. And obviously, Irwindale, we both have experience in this track. It is almost like a... It's it's wider five flags almost. Uh, I'm sure most people know this track more from its uh, its figure eight layout, but obviously the speedway layout is very popular, uh, at least with the local crowds. As you see, the uh, field getting rolled off here. Uh, Scott Rickard, he he hasn't had a very amazing season. He's been staying out of trouble and then getting in the trouble with uh, various drivers. And obviously, you see, I'm almost willing to call them the big three, the uh, 38. I believe you've got the 77 and the 88 somewhere here in the field. Yeah, they're all in the top six. So they've got the potential to get up front and stay up front. Another car that's in the top five is going to be Tehan Dank, our first race winner. And he's someone that usually has been qualifying in the middle of the pack. Now he's up here in the top five. It's going to be interesting to see if he can stay out of trouble because that's really been his issue. He's been getting in trouble, getting in little late wrecks that ruined him, his race. Yeah, it's actually really saddening for Tehan Dank. I mean, he started off the season great, and I think he was a victim of that second race where he got, a, I think, booted out of the rate or out of the win for, uh, by having Gavel, if I'm correct. See, pace car is off. Scott Rickard is controlling the restart. Green flag is in the air. Rickard doesn't get a that great of a restart. It actually looks like he spun the tires. See, he did spin the tires. Oh, wow. Go three wide. Got the bottom there of, I think, 24 of Justin Brown, he was very good in practice. Justin Brown going to be staying in third, but you got... Krembor got way loose. Almost got to Brown there, but up front, it's going to be O'Keefe. O'Keefe again picks up where he left off and gets a good start. Uh, Tommy Krembor running a different paint scheme this week. He's trying to recover his points lead that has slowly dwindled down to almost nothing. Uh, last week we were mentioning that all the points in first, second, and third were pretty much 10 points apart. And with O'Keefe's win at uh, five flags, that definitely hurt his point lead. Uh, we were talking about the top three, and there they are now in the top three. You got O'Keefe, Kremberg, and Gavel up there in the top three. So we'll see if they're able to pull away. Kremberg was the fastest driver during practice, but did not have the fastest qualifying time. Only getting up to fourth place. Noting that Joseph Clark actually looks like he fell way off the pace. I don't know if he didn't start the race or he took a pit stop. I don't see any counters on a pit stop. So it looks like he may have just fell off the pace, but he's about to get lapped by the leaders as they're as Kremborg really made a charge there at the bottom. Kremborg trying to move up. But um, a, a car that just dropped all the way to the back of the pack, that's going to be Scott Rickard. I mean, he was up front with Bull Sitter, but now he's all the way back to 10th place. I mean, after seeing that start, I mean, he just did not get going. I don't know if it's just a confidence, confidence issue or the track's just not how he remembers it. I mean, some people just have a knack for hot lapping, and I mean, when it comes to race time, hey, it's easy to string together or together one lap, but I mean, stringing together 80 laps is pretty tough. And you see in the 27 getting lapped, actually in lap number three, he spun out in the back of the pack, which is why he's being lapped down now. Yeah, obviously, 
as we've noted the most uh, all these previous weeks, obviously we do have some rookies in the field, and again, this good place just to get a good or just get a good starting experience at. And Irwindale is kind of one of the iconic racetracks as Krampenborg puts his bumper to the back of O'Keefe. And just look at the top three there. It's a pretty one-groove racetrack here at the moment as Gavel sends it in there. I'm interested to see how this 88 of Krumberg is going to react here, trying to get into the lead, if he's going to stay in second or go first. You, you've seen him in multiple races use his front bumper to move cars out of the way. We'll see if he's able to do that now or if Gavel's going to try to make a move to get into second. I'd really say Gavel almost looks like he's just checking up early in the corners. He's waiting to see how this battle between the 38 and the 88 really plays out. I think it's way too early in the race for him to really try to make many moves. These guys up front are all in a line trying to figure out when they're going to make their move. But if you go back to around 8th place, ninth place, Michael Timmerman was getting into a side-by-side -side action trying to move up through the track. Yeah, it looks like he's under uh, assault now from Scott Rickard. It looks like he's slowly trying to work his way back up the field. Just, again, a big drop going from first to tenth, especially at a place where track position in the league run was track position is everything. As Kramenborg's trying to make another charge at O'Keefe. It seems, it looks like they're trying to go on the high line, but O'Keefe is taking just a little bit lower of almost like a defensive line. Yeah, I mean, he's running. O'Keefe is running the middle line, just trying to protect it. These cars might be a little bit... Oh, Kremberg gets into the wall just slightly. It's a little loose off turn number four, which allows Gavel to get Gavel in. Gavel just went up the hill. Gavel backs off. He, was, he stayed in there. He was going to take out Kremberg, but decides to back off, save his car, and he moves back into fourth place. Now, look at Justin Brown. I mean, he can be a championship spoiler here. I don't think he's within range of the top three in points, but obviously here's the, thing, the point standing so close. If those two or those three don't finish, you know, nose to tail, that definitely can throw off some points and give either Gavel or, or my apologies, either give a Krem or Kremborg and O'Keefe a pretty good jump. Yeah, I mean, looking at the practice times, there were four cars that were really up front dominating the practice and how fast they could get, and that was Kremberg, Gavel, O'Keefe, and Brown actually was that fourth car that was fast enough to really be with these leaders. I wonder if he's going to be able to make any more moves to get up to the front or if third is where he's going to stall out. And it's worth noting that at least in the last four or five races, there hasn't really been anyone who's able to challenge these big three. And seeing Justin Brown just kind of break in is kind of a refreshing sight almost. It really is. And just like seeing these cars, they are just on top of each other trying to see who can make the mistake and once you make a mistake usually you're losing that position really fast really quick I and mean, these top four top five cars you can put a blanket over them because how close they are yeah, definitely and as the run goes on it's definitely going to become a, a big factor of how tire heating and also tire fall off is going to be as pretty much everyone knows the new iRacing tire model has gotten some credits Kremborg gets way loose out of the corner drops to the bottom of the racetrack He's going to lose, looks like, the top three spots. He's going to drop back to fourth here as he's trying to battle back on the low side. I think he's realizing he has to get back to that high line. Yeah, but he's trying to find space. There really isn't anywhere for him to go unless he goes up right now, which is cutting off our third, number 33. He cut off Caleb, but definitely with how close this points battle is, every position counts for them. If every driver, at least in that top three, is just waiting for the other to slip up. And at this point, Gavel slipped up and Kremborg has slipped up. But, you know, those two are waiting to see if O'Keefe will slip up. Gavel right on top of Brown. He almost looked like he was going to use his bumper. But there's still a lot of racing going on. We're only 23 laps into this 80-lap race. Uh, it's so quick how these laps are just ticking down. And we're only about 10 minutes into this race. I do want to note, it looks like some of the drivers are trying that bottom line, just it doesn't look like there's any grip down there. No grip, and you're, I mean, you saw Kremenberg, he's getting really loose off these corners. Yeah, I'm he's getting real loose. I mean, these guys, they're trying to push their cars to the limit getting off of these corners, and it's a struggle right now in a handful to keep these cars straight coming off of turn two and four. 
Yeah, I I definitely say add about 50 laps to the counter, and Gavel's going to start getting a little bit more pushy. Yeah, probably with 20 laps to go in the race, you'll see Gavel and Kernberg starting to use their buffer just a little bit more than they have right now. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, before with uh, Kremborg up in second, the fire I don't think was lit under Gavel to get by the 24, but now with the 88s back there, it's pretty much, hey, you got to go. As he starts making a pass in the high line of the 24, I think the 24, uh, he's going to slide back up right in front of him. Gavel just looks so loose off of these corners, though. With these cars being and running, all these laps being green for so long, the next factor that these guys have to worry about is lap traffic. They're going to catch this lap traffic in about about 15 laps if we stay green. And that's when people, cars are going to be thinking about pitting. They're going to be thinking about just trying to get past the lap traffic if we stay green for that long. Looks like Kremborg's making a move. Obviously, I don't think uh, Kremborg's too happy about just riding behind 24 and a 77, especially as you look at a 38 just driving away. I mean, he's almost pulled a second gap on Justin Brown here. And it's obvious that Justin's just trying to hang up here, but those two in the back just want to go chase down the leader. Yeah, Gavel right on Brown's bumper. Uh, he looks like he's going to use it at some point, but when is he going to pull the trigger to try to pump Brown out of the way? Because there's no... I right mean, now. <laughs> like, even if he... Shot. Oh, there he goes. Moved him. Gets down below Gavel, trying to make the move for second place to finally start moving forward. He's going to stay all the way at the bottom, throw his car up top, Whoa. and gets loose. Not able to completely get the runoff that he wanted, which gives Brown the opportunity now on the bottom. I really say I, I think Brown got off light there. I mean, I think uh, Gavel was just trying to tell him very politely to get out of the way as it is. Uh, I don't know if I'd continue blocking him at this point. Well, the scary thing is that everyone's up in the high line. So even if you use your bumper and get a car into the wall, there's a potential of you getting in that accident. Someone slows up too much and you close in just T-boning someone or getting on their back bumper. Worth noting that Riley O'Keefe has driven out to a 1.5 second lead uh, with Justin Brown holding up both the 77 and the 88. O'Keefe starting to close in on the 25. I mean, 27. Gavel gets loose. Touches Gavel the got wall it. there. Which holds up Krenberg, but allows Tyhan Dank to start moving up. Yeah, absolutely, because... Justin Brown just hanging on for looks like maybe the next pit stop or just seeing if he can as you see the 27 of Joseph Clark drop down low like the pass I mean it just shows you how hard it is to pass in this racetrack it's almost like a, just a one groove especially these modified cars that just kind of hey I've heard the uh the best comparison to them is a redneck f1 car yeah I can see that uh <laughs> that with these cars being open wheel and everything pretty much an f1 car that is made by the lowest bidder Diane Dank and Krimenberg just on top of each other. They were side by side for those past three laps. 33 almost decided to put a bumper in there and go three wide, but decided to back out. Now they're straight in the battle once again for second. You got Gavel on top of Brown once again. Is, is he going to use his bumper or are they going to wait until pit stops come around? I mean, it's almost halfway at this point. I think it's time to, you got to go. And it's not to that point where you just need to send him into the corner. Just, hey, give him a little bump and just knock him out of the way. It's just you're seeing Gavel just be so apprehensive about going lower because as you're seeing the dark line, at least that you're seeing in the corner, is just rubber that's built up. And you're looking at those low lanes, just no rubber down there. Obviously, once yeah. you get into that, almost no rubber. It's just like an ice skate down there. Gavel finally putting the move down below and getting past Brown. And now we'll see. Does Gavel have the speed to catch up to O'Keefe? Seeing him drive away, and that obviously has to be a little bit of fuel for Kremborg. Uh, seeing Gavel just pull away from Brown after uh, passing him. O'Keefe now into lap traffic. This is what I was talking about. Just a couple more laps and finally catching up to it. Absolutely. Looks like he's catching up to the 71 at the moment. Uh, 71 is a. Uh, I'm not sure how to exactly pronounce his name is uh, James Zacharis Jr. It looks like he pulls down to the low line, lets him by. And the 48 car that's being lapped by the front pack gets into the wall, staying up high, letting everyone pass. 
but he absolutely just dumped his car into the wall. You hate to see it. It looked like his car got loose, threw him up into the wall, getting lapped down. I mean, as you look at the field right now, there's about a 1.7 second gap between O'Keefe and Gavel. I mean, I'm not sure if you can make that up on the racetrack or if there's going to be any pit stops. Man, Gavel just looks way loose in that car. I mean, he's pushing as he starts catching up to the 71 of James. It looks like he's going to take the high line, which is the pretty much the preferred line at this track. Gavel did pass Brown on the low side. We'll see if he's able to hold off. Coming off the corner, he's going to be a little loose. Oh, man, he's just fighting that car. He does not look comfortable in this thing at all. No, but with him getting so loose, it's giving Brown time James to come up. Brown almost lost in the corner. It's just no one can really go down below that second hash mark. So whenever they dip down below that hash mark, it just it's almost ice down there. Yeah, you're seeing O'Keefe pulling away from Gavel at least a tenth each lap, maybe more, just because Gavel's getting so loose off the corner. O'Keefe just looks like he's just taking a cruise out front. I mean, realistically, he doesn't even have to push it. I mean, he's got a good enough lead where he can start saving some gas and planning some strategy. And obviously, there's always cautions to be worried about. But right now, as we're going through, I mean, we're past halfway and we've had no cautions. We'd I mean, love to see a green flag run. The 27 is going to get out of O'Keefe's way. As he drops back to Gavel now. As we just look at the race, man, the 27. Oh, Gavel hit the 27, the 77's around. Huge implications here. You see the 77 has a smoking motor now. Smoking motor and spins out again. There's a caution. Oh, the 48 also gets involved. Hitting into and just Ryan Gavel there. Think of all the points implications here. All three of the leaders, the 38, the 88, and the 77 were all close top three in points. This is what both O'Keefe and Kremborg were looking for. They were looking for that opportunity that, hey, they have a window. And they can make points up on him. Yeah. Go ahead and take a look back at what exactly caused this. It just kind of looked like a misunderstanding between him and the 27 of what line he wanted. That's just the closing speed coming off the corner. 27 did not get a good run off the corner, and Gavel did. I mean, as we go back here and we're going to look from the onboard of 77, it just kind of comes up on him. That's the big problem with uh, all of these cars, just moving at different speeds. Because there's really no way you can just kind of get out of the way of the faster cars. It's, it's It's loose and slides back around. Kind of just unfortunate you see the 48 just either didn't check up or didn't see him and just runs straight into the front end of him. I will say, Matt, your microphone was pretty much cut out for that whole entire replay. Oh, my apologies. Um, but we're seeing all these cars coming out for pit stops. Gavel looks like uh, he hasn't pitted yet. I, I think the engine may have just died on him. Gavel has gone through the pit stops, pit road, a couple times trying to get his engine fixed. But it looks like he's probably going to get a lap down here once he goes in. A surprise car to be up front. It's going to be Tehan Dank. I believe he's going to be our leader. And going into this next restart. Absolutely. You get Tehan Dank, Riley O'Keefe. Uh, Tehan Dank, Riley O'Keefe, and Justin Brown here as your top three. As we look at uh, Ryan Gavel currently working to get his car fixed. Uh, it looks like he's having some trouble. Just uh, I think they may want to park it, but uh, he wants to keep going. I mean, keep driving. You never know. 
Oh, I mean, with this series and all season long, when caution, when one caution happens, usually a second one also occurs really quickly. We're late in the race, and there's anything that can happen really here. Oh, and just uh, we're getting word now that the 71 of James Zacharias is actually a modified driver for the Race of Champions series. As you see, the lights in the pace car are out. They're doubling up. Looks like Tehan Dang's going to be leading us back here. He's going to pick the high lane. He's in control of the restart here. Got Riley O'Keefe, who's inside. Tehan Dang is an amazing restart. O'Keefe is right behind him. He ducks right back up to that high line. And again, this is a different look for O'Keefe right now as he's been in control of this race the entire, <laughs> pretty much the entire length. Yeah, he's been in complete control. O'Keefe, though, looks like he's a strong enough car to get by Dank, but right now Dank is in the lead, which is something we haven't seen since the first week of races. I mean, I really got to admit, do you, do you believe the myth about clean air? But, hey, I mean, once you get that clean air, you're gone. I mean, I mean with how difficult it is to pass people here, you're really going to have to see if O'Keefe can get onto Dank or not. Uh, we've seen him earlier in the race be able to get by, but I, I don't know if he really has. The clean air thing is something. It's very helpful to have clean air. But dang, something. He got real low off of that corner. He got a little... Which gives O'Keefe the chance to come in and get side by side. With now, no, all of these cars are still trying to warm up their tires, and I don't know if uh, O'Keefe managed to get his tires warmed up pretty quicker. Or pretty quick, uh, but he makes his pass to the lead on tape or lead on the Tay head day. See Justin Brown trying to capitalize and get that second position now. The Brown is thinking about putting his bumper below Dank, but not going to be able to do it at the moment. And it's worth noting that uh, at least our, at least our uh, top three points leaders, Gavel looks to still be on pit road. The 88 of Kremborg is uh, currently fighting back with lap traffic and Scott Rickard. And obviously, O'Keefe is having the best day here with being in first. I mean, with how much O'Keefe pulled away on that last green flag run, if we continue staying green, I don't know if there's anyone that can touch him. Absolutely. I mean, he's just, he's pretty much just going for a Sunday drive here at the moment. I mean, the two cars that looked like they had a chance to catch O'Keefe, they're both dealing with trouble right now with Ryan Gavel being a couple laps down, dealing with his engine issues of that last caution. And then you also have Kremberg being in the middle of the pack. Right now, he is seventh, trying to make his way up through the pack. But with how much time it's going to take for him to get through that, we'll see if he can get up to O'Keefe. He might be asked for a caution soon. I mean, just like we were talking about last week, we interviewed all three drivers and we asked them, hey, are you waiting for a break when something happens and if you're ever, you know, camp or championship contenders? And each one of them said, well, I just hope it's not me. I hope it's not me. I hope it's him. I hope it's not me. And obviously, it uh, looks like O'Keefe has been the winner of that one, or that lottery here at the moment, as the 77 of Ryan Gavel still on pit road, still trying to get that repaired. And Kremborg, Kremborg just does not look that quick. I mean, he's trying to pank a pass in the 12 of Jody Banfield here at the moment. It just, he can't get that bite off the corner. And I mean, just kind of shocking to see someone who's dominated that many races this season just having trouble here. Or so many racers have, have just dominated this season. Yeah, I mean, Cronenberg's been dealing with a, his car being loose off the corner all race long. It's it out. Oh! Looks like the 33 of Caleb was involved. Let's go ahead and take a look back here. Actually, it looks like he may have gotten turned. Right in front of Cronenberg. As we see here, it looks like the uh, 12 of Jody Banfield right on his left rear. Banfield looks like he just pushed up the racetrack just a little bit. And doesn't look like uh, Cranborg got involved. This nice spin around didn't hit anything. Let's go ahead and take a look from Kremborg's onboard. So you see here from Kremborg's onboard, I mean, just the whole situation 
kind of happens in front of him. I think he was pushing Jody Banfield just a little bit too hard, and he overdrove him to the corner and just kind of knocked him around. As we're back under the caution here, it looks like Riley O'Keefe uh, not going to pit this time. Looks like he's going to still maintain the lead. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that these cars are still fast even later on in the run. They've done their one pit stop and then ready to go. A little update on the cars that are still driving. The 71 of James Zacharias Jr. has ended his race for the night after having some issues early in the race. Absolutely. As we see the current labor just pace under caution here. It's kind of surprising not to see Tehan Dank, even though he probably doesn't need tires. I'm kind of surprised he's not trying an alternate strategy. I mean, you're, you're within the points battle, but I mean, I think he's about 30 points out of the lead. I mean, just seeing if you can try something different, but obviously you kind of run the risk of falling into the hole that Krenborg's in here at the moment. I think Krenborg tried something different. He kind of paid the price for it. He's still back in sixth. I don't know if he had any other contact. Um, I, I mean, he's it's looked like he's getting close to the wall every single time he gets loose, and it seems like he's getting close almost every three to five laps. So it's difficult to say when Krenberg's going to be able to get through the pack. I think the only car we've really seen that has been able to make moves and pass has been O'Keefe and then Ryan Gavel earlier in the race. But since Gavel is right now in the pits trying to fix his car up so he can get a couple positions, I'll, it's I'll be honest, I don't know if uh, Gavel is actually going to get back out before the race ends. I mean, we've got nine laps to go, and I'm going to guess they're trying to replace the engine on that car, which is about a 30-minute job. So, I mean, I don't I don't think he's going to turn over lap in this event. Yeah, I mean, but he's still trying to give his chance. You never know. We might have some green, green white checkers later on in the race if we stay green or not. But nine laps to go, still out of action. I mean, yeah, these laps can go very quickly. We can be done just after this restart. Pace car pulls off. See O'Keefe in full control of the restart. I mean, he's gotten great restarts this season. Just see him take off. Gets an amazing jump over Tehan Dank. See Justin Brown taking that bottom line. Justin Brown risking it all, throwing it down and staying in second. That was a very risky move, but he made it work just for that corner. <laughs> I mean... Oh, and he, he goes just, around! Oh, Brown's around. No caution, still keeps it straight. With the help of Tehan Dank, obviously, but they're going three wide in that corner. Brown hits the 33 car of Caleb Fage. I mean, just kind of trying to damage control. As we see some new players up here that we haven't seen prior. 12th and second. And we got Michael Timmerman. Timmerman. Yeah, Timmerman in third. I see Caleb Fage. He actually went around in that last caution. See him trying to make a power move for third. Uh, Timmerman, he's been pretty silent all season. He's been caught in a few instances, but really has been silent all race and brings home good finishes. And that's really what you need for consistency. But the man up front, all by himself, has been dominating the whole entire race. It's Riley O'Keefe, and it, here we come, coming to just three laps to go, and no one is near him. A caution is what everyone else needs to have a chance at this race win, or O'Keefe is just going to run away with it. See Justin Brown still beating Bubba. He dumps the 33 of Caleb Fage. And caution is out. Yeah, it definitely looks like uh, that may have been... Uh... A little bit of a retaliated move here, but let's go ahead and take a look back here. Looks like they got into one another, which causes the 33 to spin around. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I'm not sure if you may have been frustrated with them or not, but those two were beating a bang just a few laps ago. Yeah. The, even the race officials think that was on purpose. They, We've gotten worried that Justin Brown has just been disqualified for that move. Yeah, I mean, at least to that whole last few laps, he was just getting really pushy. I mean, I don't blame him there. I think he might have been angry about being 
what it looked like being spun out earlier. As it looks but, like the race will be called here. No green white checkers. It looks like it's gonna finish under. Yes, it's finishing under caution. It appears. Well, so can you go ahead and back me up out here. Uh, right now we're waiting to see. If they're going to do a green-white checker, they need to do it now. No, it currently appears like it would be a 38 of Riley O'Keefe as your race winner. Pace car's pulled off, so no green-white checker. He's starting to do his burnouts. Definitely an interesting way to end the race. It really is. I mean, it just, I mean... Brown was up front, gets in a little bit of an incident, and then retaliates, which causes that last second caution. You really I mean, don't like to see that type of an ending to a race, but just O'Keefe, look at that. Two wins in a row. Back to back. I mean, this is, has big implications for his uh, challengers. As you see, O'Keefe manages to finish first for pretty much twice in a row. Jody Banfield, who's been pretty much silent this entire season, kind of sneaks his way in a second. Michael Timmerman brings home his season best in third. And a big, big name and big implications is the, the 88 car of Tommy Kremborg finishing fourth outside of the top three. And that's pretty much a rare occurrence at this point. But obviously the uh, biggest implication has to be back in the 14th position. As you see, Ryan Gavel finishes 27 laps down. That's definitely going to hurt his playoff uh or pretty much a championships or championship aspirations, man. I just can't say that word. Yeah, there's still a bit of time though with the season, and you never know when that person's going to be the guy that has an issue. This race, it was Ryan Gavel. You got to say, Tommy Kremberg, he kind of lucked out with that whole entire incident with Justin Brown and backing everyone up when he got sideways. And then you got O'Keefe getting your race winner two in a row. Congratulations to him. You know, even after that incident, I mean, Tehan Dank still managed to pull home a good top five, which, you know, here's the thing, after his seasons kind of went rocky after his good start, I mean, consistency is what he needs to start getting back on that winning path. Uh, Scott Rickard is also another notable. He started off this race in our pole position, and he manages to fall back to eighth, rallies back. Uh, definitely an odd situation there. See, Justin Brown is being scored in the ninth position. Not sure if that's going to change after any penalties. Uh, Joseph Clark's in 10th. Uh, Caleb Fage, after it looks like a, just a poor incident with him, he finishes in the 11th position, three laps down. Then we just start going through the field. Don, Don in the 48 uh, was pretty much done after he hit Ryan Gavel. Uh, the 71, the 03, and a 90 just pretty much had bad days. Yeah, Let's the 90 ahead. car did not take off from the grid. I just stayed in pit road all race. The L3 was on pit road for the whole entire race. It looks like we have some of the drivers ready to come in for some interviews. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll pull in our third place finisher, Michael Timmerman. Uh, actually, I don't think Timmerman's in there. So let's go ahead and we'll go back. And Jody Banfield's not in here. So let's go ahead and bring in Riley O'Keefe uh, while we're waiting on the other two. Hello, Riley. This is Matthew in the FRN booth. Uh, how did you go from this whole thing of not being able to win to winning every week? I mean, this is a big change. This is very big. I'm very, kind of, very big. I'm really shocked. There's no face in the back of your car. I'm disappointed. You know, I thought I thought today was the throwback race, so I was throwing it back to when uh, Steven Nassie got DQ'd at the Snowball Derby. So I'm running <laughs> PFC brakes all over the car, but but then I was informed that it was next week, so I'll be probably running a different scheme. Make sure you put those Brembo stickers on. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll have to get those, too. <laughs> uh, Riley, congratulations on the win. It looked like you were dominating, and it looked easy out there. Was it feeling easy in the car? Yeah, once we got about to about lap five on that initial start, I was just dialed in. I had the car. The car was handling really good, just all throttle control. And I was just cruising away from them the longer we went green. And then I got up to like a two-second lead towards the end there. And I, I was boogieing. Absolutely. And with uh, the faults of your 
championship competitors. I mean, you're in really good position here. I mean, Kremborg manages to finish fourth, and the biggest hit has to be uh, Ryan Gavel finishing 14th. I mean, what's, what's your outlook here? Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, uh, I believe his name was Blake, the blue car. He would let me buy all the time. And then I, uh, Gavel said he cleaned them out, but I'm not sure what happened. I did not check the replay. Uh, it looks like pretty much uh, I'd, I'd say Gavel kind of ran up on him a little bit fast, and he just didn't have anywhere to go, and he hit the back of the, I think it was the 27? Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, and after that, uh, he just kind of went around. When he hit the back of him, it blew the engine out of it, so. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, he said he blew his engine, his race was over, and probably his season. Yeah, it's definitely disappointing, especially since you guys were pretty much top three in standing, so definitely a big hit. Yeah, very big hit for Gavel there. But that helped me out. And Tommy finishing fourth, I believe, that also helped me out. I should gain points on him. Yeah, it's kind of shocking. He's We may, we, uh, may interview him anyway, but uh, <laughs> kind of odd not to see him in the top three, especially not seeing Gavel in the top three. I'm kind of surprising. We've been talking yeah. to you guys every week. Not not really sure what happened with, uh, I think Justin and Caleb got together down the back. And Justin said he was done with them because he kept dooring them, but I didn't check out the replay on that. Not really sure what happened. Actually, yeah, what's your take on the Justin Brown situation? I mean, uh, I know that, at least in the early part of the race, I mean, he kind of helped you get out to a really good lead there by holding up both the 77 and the 88. Every Imagine time I that. checked relative and I saw Justin... Uh, in second, I just look at my mirror, and he's just pulling sliders left and right and just yeah. making them fall farther <laughs> and farther back. Yeah, he's dirt tracking a lot of these corners. Yeah. When we pitted for tires, I asked Justin what his tires were at. He said 92. Tommy said 85, but mine were still at 94 after that 50-lap run, I believe. Man, tire saving. Uh, but really, congratulations on the win. I'll go ahead and give you a shout-out or the ability to uh, shout-out anyone you want here. Um, I'm going to have to thank that lap car for getting out of the way. I mean, if he didn't get out of the way, then I probably wouldn't have won that race. Because he allowed me to stay in my rhythm there. So thank you, Blake. Very appreciated. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much for speaking with us. I'll go ahead and I'll turn you back to the waiting room. Thank you for having me. Oh, I lied. I put him in the lobby. All righty. Uh, Sam, do you want to pull in uh, Kremborg? Yeah. Yeah, since uh, it looks like we don't have our top second or third place finishers here. Hey. All right, Tommy. Welcome to the booth. Uh, you got a fourth place finish. It was looking rough out there for you to get past cars. And how was it feeling for you while you were driving out there? Uh, it was very, uh, you had to be very concentrated, obviously, with throttle control and everything due to how like loose the track was. Like You could barely get on the throttle coming out. Very hard to pass. You pretty much have to throw it down in there and kind of pull like a slide job off. But it, it was hectic. Yeah, so, we were seeing Justin Brown do a slide job a couple of times. Looked a little scary out there. Oh, yeah, definitely when you are running down the backstretch and a car just randomly comes in front of you and you got to you gotta kind of check up a little bit to not hit them. I had to do that a couple of times. I, I definitely have to ask the burning question in my mind. I mean, in that laps, last 40 laps after that first caution, I mean, you really started to fade. I mean, anything happened? Well, uh, when we went down to pit for tires, I came out right behind Riley, but I was uh, I got a speeding penalty for being one over. So I had to go to the back and try and uh, fight my way back up. That's definitely unfortunate. But, I mean, you managed to rally back to a fourth place finish, and obviously with Gavel finishing 14th, I mean, that pretty much puts the championship race between you and Riley. Yeah, that's got, I, I feel so bad for Gavel. We were all in a discord when it happened. And it's, it's, that's got to suck, especially when it's like a lap car. Yeah, it, I, I really don't know where to place the fault there. I, I think uh, people will place their faults, but uh, seeing the, the, the 77 definitely ran up on the 27 just way too fast, but I really don't know where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess kind of know where mean. to go. I, I don't like. I was behind him, but I couldn't really tell what happened. Um, I just saw him wreck, and I was like, "Oh crap!" Like that's bad for him. And then he comes over Discord and says his engine's blown, and then he's done. Hmm. 
that's definitely unfortunate. But I mean, I keep telling you guys, you should run the uh, figure eight here, and we'll be fine. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> it's acceptable to wreck someone. Yeah, that is okay to full throttle into someone. Yeah, I hope uh, Cruz could do something like that at the end of the season for just something fun to do. That'd be yeah. cool. I know he's hosting a special event on Friday, but it'd definitely be kind of cool to see uh, the mods here. Yeah, but, dude. Uh, that'd be thank cool. you for speaking with us, Tommy. I mean, anyone you want to shout out or say thanks to? Uh, well, for one, I definitely want to shout out Mike Stefanik for this race. I thought it was going to be this week was a throwback, but I found out it's next week. Still, uh, I'll probably run this paint scheme, if not like a Teddy Christopher for next week. Uh, we've gotten a lot of that. Uh, everyone thought the uh, throwback week was this week, but I uh, definitely have to thank you for talking with us. Uh, enjoy your Christmas break. We'll see you back here in January. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All righty. Uh, looks like those are the only two we're going to be able to get to interview here at the moment. Uh, that was our first and fourth place finishers. Uh, definitely an interesting race. Big playoff, or I keep saying playoff, big championship implications here. Uh, Sam, what's your take? I mean, it was a good race overall. You got to see O'Keefe uh, uh, go out there and dominate. Uh, interesting to see that, you know, Tommy was able to get to it fourth. I mean, it, it was a really risky race for all these guys out here. You really couldn't pass. And you kind of stuck wherever you were at. Got to feel bad for Ryan Gavel, but overall, a great race. Not, a lot, not that many cautions, but an overall great race to watch. Yeah, this is definitely the nightmare scenario for a lot of these championship drivers. I mean, last thing you want to do is come into a racetrack where you you consider one of the better racetracks in your schedule and, I mean, just come out here and have a really unfortunate or just a poor race or circumstances out of your control. I mean, we've seen it before. We'll see it again. Just really unfortunate. Really was. Uh, what's uh, the next race on our list of races? Uh, we may or may not be, uh, broadcasting the elites, uh, sports car race tomorrow, but in terms of the sim racers for mental health schedule, our next race is Thompson on January 2nd. That'll be our new year in 2020. Should be a fun race there. Get to see all the action. See these top two guys in points. Who's going to win it. Who's going to continue having a great wait season. Absolutely. And that'll be all from us here. Oh, I, I hear myself. Uh, that'll be all from us here tonight. So we're going to have to thank you for watching the Flat Out Racing Network broadcasting the Sim Racers for Mental Health Race of Champions, uh, race number six at Irwindale. We'll see you all in 2020.